Hi. So I am back. It's Becky Bolot with Creative Memories. I'm in Virginia. And um, today is Tip Tuesday. So thanks for tuning in. Hopefully things will be a little quiet. My big dog Hokey is in the, well, he's a dachshund miniature, but he's in the window. He's bigger than the other and he is nervous. So he's like whining a little bit. So you might hear him bird. Very happy this morning in the other room. She's been making, he's been making quite a bit of noise and Gracie, I'm hoping will stay out of here. Um, she's in there and maybe it'll be good. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you a double page spread using the dollop arch, which is a relatively new um, frame punch. And, um, and after that, for those of you that have been struggling with your new circle cutter, um, this is my favorite tool. And I had somebody at my crop the other day say that she hated this tool until she started using it. And now it's her favorite tool. Um, and I had somebody else say they hated it. Um, a, a new client, Marilyn, um, she, she called me and said she got it and has never been able to use it. And I believe that for most part, um, if you hate it, it's maybe some user error. So because I had user error when I first got it <laughs> and um, I was doing it all wrong. And so I can can um, understand that. So I'm going to talk about the tips and tricks of this guy. It's a really inexpensive standalone tool. It doesn't need anything else. So I think it's a really good investment. All right, so let's um, go ahead and get started. All right, so we are going to use dollop today. And to do the page spread that I'm going to teach, you're going to want a, um, a six by eight piece of paper and an eight by 10. Remember, if you're going to frame something, your paper needs to be even dimensions on both sides. So I'm choosing six by eight and eight by 10, and we're going to frame them. Okay. So if you're not used to framing, remember that um, typically on our border punches, you line up your paper with one of these lines to do a border. Okay. A full border. But if you're framing our frame punches, have little lines that are outside of the tool right here. And that's what you line up the paper to when you're framing. All right. When I say framing, it's going to go all the way around. OK, so let's go all the way around this blue one first. So you get to see this twice. See where I'm lining up outside. I'll go quickly now because now I can line up. Very important that you do not get carried away and clip off your other side. So when you get to the point that your paper is just popping out down here, that means you're on your last punch. Because we need this notch to go around the corner. All right, so I'm gonna put it in and now I'm gonna put that notch up against that line. Okay, I can see the paper poking out over here. You can too. That means I'm done. Go around again. Sometimes those little things kind of hang on. They didn't hear, but sometimes they do. And if they do, um, it's just tug on it a little bit and it'll pop right off. Okay, I can see the paper coming out here. That means I am done with this side. And then rotate one last time. Again, this has been lined up with this line. And uh, two should do it this time. All right, beautiful. All right, so I'm going to do the second one a little faster. Since you know how to do it now, hopefully. In fact, I'm going to stop trying to do it upside down because it's hard for me to do it that way. I'm going to have a young thing come over and help me with some technology um, this week. So maybe I'm going to get better at this. You never know. You never know. But these young girls, they know how to do it, man. So I know that I am 
very rudimentary <laughs> with my skills. <laughs> But I love showing you guys this stuff. So I'm glad that so many of you bear with me. <laughs> I appreciate you. All right. So there we go. I've got my two things. And um, this would look good just the way it is. Like, wouldn't it? Like, if you put, like, a little photo, like, a four by six in here, would be, be a great, like, title page. But that's not what we're going to do right now. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to grab my trimmer. And I am going to cut on the diagonal. So um, from one... Um, corner to the other corner on both of them. All right. And then what you have is a great corner embellishment. Okay. So I could do this to get a really, um, really cool look in the corner, right? Um, I would recommend that you use cardstock for at least one of your samples, and that way you can flip them. Um, you could see how this this one wouldn't have worked, but because I was able to flip it, it did. Um, so anyways, kind of play with that. All right, so that's that's that. And then you're gonna I'm gonna show you a page with it that's super pretty, so don't go anywhere. Um, another thing that you're gonna see that I used on this page is this guy. Y'all know what this is? This is the snowflake. It's also a frame punch, by the way. So it does the same thing as that dollop one did. But what I want to, a lot of times, and I, I'm mentioning it, I always freak out when they move something to the while supplies last. Um, that means that this is going to sell out soon. And I'm worried that you all see this as a snowflake punch. <laughs> um, it's called snowflake punch, and it makes beautiful snowflakes. So you may think you don't need this right now because it's summertime, right? Um, so, or spring. So what I want to show to you is how stinking cool this is for making flowers. All right. So I just punched out, see all the little droppings that come out. What if I flip that one there and flip this one here or not flip it, but maybe use it the same way. Then all of a sudden you get a totally different look especially if you throw some little green leaves behind it. Um, so for instance, um, let's see if I have a good scrap. So now if I were to throw a petal behind it, and all of a sudden your your um, psyche is kind of uh, fooled. Your brain is fooled and you think it's something else. So you're going to see this also on the page that I'm going to do. So let me give everything out of the way for a moment. And I will show you the beautiful double page spread. So I put the corners at the top this time. I was able to do that because I used cardstock for both. There was no flipping. I mean, I could flip it to get the look that I wanted. Um, see my little journal box with the flowers made out of snowflakes. Is that beautiful? All right. So um, you can trick your eyes um, into thinking anything. And um, I love them. I think they're really pretty little flowers. I um, put a little foam square under this one to get a little pop. All right. Is that lovely? Um, another thing that I want you to be aware of is a lot of times we like border strips. Um, I talked um, recently about our laser strips, which make really quick, easy borders. But we have another product that makes really super quick, easy borders, and it's called Totally Tonal Stickers. They come in all different color schemes. So when I started making this in the blue family, I knew to reach down for my Totally Tonal blue strips to kind of add a little something, something to this page. So these were two um, laser strips for my totally tonal blues. So make sure you think about the color schemes that you use the most. What are some of the page spreads that you have are color schemed, but you have difficulty maybe finding the you know stickers that match? Um, totally tonal are just color schemed. Um, so if you need karate and it's a brown belt, why don't you get the the, the ones that we have that have some browns in it? You know, if, if, if it's a gymnastics meet and the um, 
the gymnast on your team or your, your daughter is wearing purple, why not get the totally tonal with the purples? And that way um, you can get the look that you want, even though you might not have the perfect stickers that match. OK, so that's what I did here because of all of these little um, scallops. I thought that the wavy blade would add a lot to this. So that's why um, I did some wavy um, blade on some of my mats. Um, that's a great place. And, and if you're not familiar, our trimmer, um, it has all kinds of different blades. All right. So that that's how you can get different cuts. Some of you I know some of you just saw that and are like, oh, my gosh, you have so many blades. And it's because. I um, buy extras when I lose one. And so we really don't have that many, but I have extras of some of them under there. Okay. <laughs> all right. So that takes care of that. All right. So that is all that I have that is new. Um, if you want a little tutorial, though, on our circle cutter, I hope that you will stay. Um, and I'm going to give you some, some help on that. All right. So um, let's start with matting. Now, a lot of people think, you know, oh, well, I have this, so I don't need my circle patterns for my circle and oval cutter anymore. And I personally still love cutting photos with my cutting system. The reason is it, there's less chances of me getting a flat edge um, or um, because I can see what I'm cutting with these clear patterns. I can see where I'm where I'm cutting. And I know that I can do a four inch circle out of this and make this work. However, it's a little risky -er, um, because I can't see actually what I'm cutting until I'm done. All right. So I like to cut my paper with this. I like to cut my photos with this. All right. Um, as far as paper, it is much speedier. Um, and it does has a lot more versatility. So, uh, and, you know, as far as sizing, you're not locked into different sizes. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this one. Sorry about Gracie. Um, she has to have surgery soon. She's got a growth in her larynx. And um, as a result, she's it's impeding her breathing. So you have to feel sorry for her and don't yell at her all the time, you know, right? <laughs> And I'm getting a call. I'm going to hang up and hopefully they won't call back. All right. I'll call them back. All right. So there's my circle. Now, as far as mats go, um, I don't need to worry about different color blades or how wide. Um, typically, I do use my smallest pattern to cut my circles or four by six circles. So it's to me, most of the time, my circles are going to be perfect with that size, not too small, um, just the right size, but it cuts away everything I need. So if I know that to be true, then um, anything from four, because usually it's not right at four, usually it's a little bit smaller, but I like to go with a 4.2 format. And if I'm going to double mat, I might even go up to four point, um, I'm going to do 4.5, which is right in the middle. All right. So take a look. So just some just some things about it. All right. So first of all, I always tell my people to put a black Sharpie mark on this hump. Uh, mine is fading away, but I can still see the hump. So not a big deal. I also tell my clients to put a, a black mark down here where it looks like it's right smack in the middle. OK, that will help you with some other skills that I, I teach every now and then. OK, also on your uh, you, there's a little whisker here and here. Um, it does both. Um, there's a, let me see if I can get the light right. So the black markings is the right marking um, for drawing. So if you're going to draw something, um, that's what you're going to use the black markings for. And the white ones that you can just barely see, they're very prominent to me. Um, but in this lighting, not so much. Let's see if I can make it better. Uh, probably not. But anyways, um, there is a white line of numbers, too. So you line up your crosshair to whatever um, dimension and each little slash is two tenths. So this is seven, seven point two, seven point four. So if I want seven point five, I just go in between the lines. OK, so kind of keep that in mind. You might want to jot that down. All right. So I am going to about the four point five. Now, another tip. And this is when I started, I, I did it all wrong. I was holding it all wrong. All right. This is your blade. So this is what I cut with down here. Let me grab my pens for a minute. If you have our creative memories pens, you're also going to be able to do some other cool things with it because our creative memories pens fit perfectly in here to draw. OK, so if you draw with your right hand, your pen is held by your right hand. 
If you put your scissors in your right hand, then this cutting blade here should be in your right hand. So your hand that is less dominant always holds this. This is like a compass, okay? So your less dominant hand holds here, all right? Now, just like when you were learning to use these, you were told to put quite a bit of pressure, right? Not too much, but sometimes I, I watch my clients and a lot of times when they use this tool, they even stand up to cut. So to tell you the truth, I think it's okay to stand up to use this too. You're going to put pressure. You've got to put pressure so it cuts into your, your mat. Okay, so a lot of times people just aren't putting the proper pressure pressure okay but a lot of times they're just not using the proper hand if you're not strong enough to cut then you're not going to cut all right so another thing that i struggled with when i first got it is is where is it cutting all right so your blade is underneath this guy okay um i wish i had i do have a sharpie all right your blade is right under here that's where it is it's right under that dot right there OK, so if you if your dot is out here on your mat, it's not cutting your paper. OK, and I don't even want that dot even with the paper, you know, move it in a little bit so you're a little safer. OK, until you actually squeeze this, squeeze this in and put pressure down, it's not cutting. So I can go like this all I want to and it's not cutting anything. So before you cut, you want to make sure that you are going to um, it's going to stay on the paper. So I'm still at 4.5. And um, I can see that my over the paper there, plenty of room up here, of course, here is good and it's good here. So once you've decided that it's right, just wheel around. So I am standing, I am putting pressure, okay? Um, now, um, what I'm gonna do at this point, I mean, that's gonna be a beautiful mat, but I am not gonna, I'm gonna show you something extra, okay? It's, it's a beautiful mat for that photo. It's a little thick and I did that on purpose. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to loosen up this little white dial. This white dial is my measurement, okay? Now, this is where you have to be very careful. It is intuitive to just kind of slide this dial, but you don't want to slide the dial. You want to slide this bar, all right? I'm going to slide it. Right now, it's at 4.5. I'm going to slide it to 4.2. So I am I'm just pulling this on the paper. It doesn't feel like it will work, but it does. It, 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 it just very I'm holding here to make sure my circle middle does not change, but I am changing my radius of the circle that I'm cutting. Now, before I cut, I need to tighten back up that white dial. OK, and then we're going to cut again. OK, now. Let me show you what we got. So now, if you want to, you have the one circle that you can just put the photo in for one look. Um, here. Okay, so you get this look. And then you have this one for something else. Or you can play with it. Maybe I've got a little hair there. So maybe um, put this one there. Put this one there for a double mat. Actually, it'll look better the other way. Like that. Is that cool? All right. So that's one skill I wanted to teach you. Um, Another thing um, that is really easy with these is doing semicircles and quarter circles and stuff like that. So if I wanted, um, oh, by the way, like if I wanted to put this piece of paper on my page, and a lot of you wallpaper, after you cut the hole out of it, it's useful again, isn't it? All right, so you can save paper that way. Put this back in if you want to. For another double mat look. And then you could use this one for something else on the other page, maybe. All right, is that cool? So I just wanted to make sure you knew it could do that.
before I pulled the paper away. All right, so another thing that you may do with this that's kind of easy and fun is, okay, I'm gonna put it on my, my, um, my board so that it's on a line. I am going to then line up my crosshairs with this line and my, my, um, my lump that I told you to put a mark on with the edge of this. So what that means is I now could do a semicircle if I want to. So if you wanted to notch out the corner, all four corners, for instance, and maybe put flowers down in the corner, you could do that. Um, sometimes um, I like to do real dramatic cuts. Like let's say I wanted to put the center this. And when I say center it, um, I mean between the top and the bottom here so that it's on a line. And what if I wanted to cut a semicircle here? All right, so then to do that, same thing. Um, I am going, I know that this is my middle midline. This is at the six inch because I was careful to center it. All right, then what I'm going to do is again, make sure my crosshairs are pointing to the edge of the paper and then make sure my lump is on the six inch so that it's centered. Oh, and I'm going to make this wider this time. I'm changing, um, I'm, I'm loosening it up. And remember, I need to shove this in the direction that I want it to go. I'm not just going to change the measure anywhere else. You've got to sl slide this guy to get a bigger one. All right. So look at how pretty that looks. So now we have this. This could be part of your decoration. Maybe even put this one back in. This works really well if you like both sides of your paper. Is that cool? And then, of course, you can throw your photos on there. Maybe put this somewhere else. Mm, nah, I'm not going to do that because it's not going to add that much. Here. All right, is that cool? Maybe just put two photos up there and some some more. All right, so that's that's some cutting skills. All right, um, you could keep doing multiple rings if you want to, different size rings and stuff. All right, so the other thing that I wanted to make sure you knew how to do is how to use your um, pen. So you can do big circles, you can do little circles. Sometimes I like to do circles just big enough to put a photo in for a, um, a pen um, type um, embellishment. So again, I'm gonna go back with that 4.5 that I told you about earlier. But this time, if I use the black, I mean the, um, the white ruler that I've been using, um, that's for cutting, not for drawing. I need the black one. If I really want a 4.5, I better measure this, put this in between the four and the five on the black ruler. Okay. All right. And then um, figure out where you want it. Let's say I wanted it down here. Make sure your pen has space. So here's, here's where the pen is going to be. Make sure it can go all the way around. And um, you do need our pens to do this. Um, don't use the um, bold tip, use the fine tip. Okay. There's that. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to move it, and there's no rhyme or reason, I'm going to move it just a smidgen in one direction. All right, so I'm going to go like right there. I'm going to change my pen color. I'm going to put my top on because I have this problem with losing my pen tops. So I never put, oh, don't use the bold end. Do your fine tip end. That's the only end that works well. Go around again. Okay, I'm gonna do one more color. Maybe, yeah, see, this one doesn't have a top, but it's okay because it's, it's all out of ink now. <laughs> all right, so now I'm gonna move it again. I'm gonna move it back to where the middle was and I'm gonna move it in a different direction this time. So just little subtle changes. All right. If you have any of our bold tip pens, 
not the red one, of course, because this one is dead. <laughs> um, but then you can also put little kind of, these are the dot pens. I love them because you can put different size dots. You can put big ones, little ones. Let's put a couple little ones. Okay. And then you can throw your photo in there. It's instant, super cute. All right, you can also do bigger ones, same fashion. If you're gonna do a bigger one, again, use your black ruler. Um, the biggest it's gonna let you go is to an 11.2. Um, so if you're gonna do an 11.2 circle, again, um, make sure, oops, you wanna kind of guess where the middle is. Make sure your pen is going to have room on all sides. It's lovely. And then you can go for it. This is really nice for a title page. OK, um, and now leave the center where it is. Maybe move it just a smidgen. And on this one, I definitely, definitely, definitely um, would test it before you do it. Make sure it's still going to be on the paper. It's a little risky over on that right side. It's going to it's going to fit, but I'm going to move it. I think we have more room to wiggle on this side. So I'm going to kind of move it more this way. See what happens. I'm going to go down a little bit there. You see what I'm doing? Just making sure I have more space. OK, and same thing, as I said before, you can do a third one, fourth one. I don't care how many you do. And then you might want to do these guys. You can put stickers. I've seen put, people put cute little stickers or little flower embellishments or these little gemstones that come with a lot of our embellishment sets look all pretty on them as well. All right. And then you can put several pictures on the inside if you want to um, or a title. So really um, cool. I love it. All right. Um, so I think that typically, again, when people screw up, um, it's that you're not using, you're either using the wrong hand or the wrong measuring stick. Okay. So it even has a little picture of a pen on the dark one and on the white one, it actually has a picture of a little blade. Oh, and by the way, when your blade dulls, you just push this little knob right here. Um, bad demonstration because I'm not getting it to, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, you click this and then it just opens up and you can change your little blade. I think they're like maybe seven bucks to replace them, but um, you won't need to replace it very often. Okay. I hope that helps. Um, just remember that um, if you want to do the rings, Let's do another demonstration on the rings. Let's do a bigger ring. Let's do, um, say, a six. All right, we've got a six. We're cutting. The blade is underneath the white. Um, I'm going to check it, make sure I have space all the way around, and I do. I am, I'm a, I'm a right-hander, so my scissors, which is my blade, is in my right hand. And I am putting down pressure. I'm standing up. I'm putting down pressure. Now to do the next ring, what I'm going to do is loosen the white knob here. I find that I sometimes um, do it really tight. If you don't do it really tight, it's a lot easier. So I've loosened it. That's all I've done. Now what I'm going to do is take this and pull it to make a smaller ring. So I'm going to go a couple notches over. No rhyme, no reason. It doesn't really matter that much, does it, on these mats? You just want it to be pretty, right? All right, now let's do it again. Loosen, slide it. I'm not gonna go any smaller than a four, and that way I know that my um, 4.0 photo is gonna fit fine. All right, so now what you have is a place for my photo.
actually, I'll tell you what also looks really cool is if you do this with them. So I could keep going and do more rings. I, I clearly had more space for that. But that way you can also do kind of an irregular shaped one too. All right. Is that fun? I hope you like it. I hope you love this tool. It's 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 cheap. It's $26.50 in it. It's going to be one of your lifetime, one of your favorite tools. But there, you know, try it on some scraps first. And then it will be your favorite tool. It is it is my go to for, for cutting circles um, out of paper. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Let me um bring you back so that I can see your lovely faces. Um, ooh, put the light in front of my face. So anyways, I appreciate you um, tuning in um, and watching me and I hope you have a great week. That promotion that I've been talking about where you can get either the, the weaving waves or the building bricks with the complimentary paper packs, they have extended that promotion until Friday. So if you're saying to yourself, I don't have that circle cutter, I don't have that tremor or any of the cold legs. <laughs> now might be time to try our tools. Our tools are amazing. I don't care who tools you use. You will love our tools. They're, they're really amazing. All right. So anyways, great time to stock up and get a free um, punch and a free paper pack by spending $135. I think you have until Friday at 1 p.m. or while supplies last. All right. So thank you. Bye.